Hi and welcome to this course titled XPA Navigation. My name's Tanya and I'll take you through the course which is aimed at providing you an introduction to the XPA Ledger to get you off to a flying start. Today we'll look at the agenda, we'll understand the key XPA components and terminology with XPA being short for Exceed Professional Accounting. And this is the General Ledger and Asset Ledger for the Reckon APS module of software. We'll look at how to access existing XPA ledgers and how to navigate within the existing ledger and briefly look at the main components. Finally, we'll make sure you understand where to get more help on more detail around the components and more in XPA. Let us take a look at the main um, components and terminology. At the start of each financial year, Reckon will supply you with an annual set of masters. And these masters will include any of the following. A master template, some entity templates and perhaps chart templates, and hundreds of sheets. Those sheets within the templates are referenced by job streams. And job streams will be your financial reports. And there will be various combinations of those. They could be compliance related or non-compliance management accounts. They include things like income statements, profit and loss, balance sheets, notes, compilation reports, director's declarations, etc. So these are all stored in what we call the masters and they are mainly stored at a template level. Templates don't have transactions in them. They are simply there to provide you a standard and consistent approach to apply to each of your client ledgers. And we'll just refer to those as ledgers. So what's in your ledgers? Well the ledgers themselves will have their own chart of accounts which generally is copied down from a master template or an entity template. The ledger itself has its own ownership accounts the ledger will have transactional details, it will have assets, both book and tax values can be stored for those assets, and it will have its own reporting, both transactional and financial reporting. It's important to note that Australia and New Zealand have their own set of masters, and as I said, they'll be released each year at the start of the year. So if you need more information on that, there is a separate course to cover each specific region. Today we're going to have a look at the focus on the client ledger and have a look about how you open those client ledgers and navigate around them to get you off to that flying start. So let's get into it and take a look at how we're going to open the ledger. Central console is where we're going to start. We're going to search for the client that we want to go and look at their ledger for. And that's simply by using the filter or the F9 key and typing in the name of the client. We're actually on the client we're looking for. If you need to use the while characters, you can use that to find your particular ledger that you want to. In my case, I'm just going to use this one. Central Console, if you're familiar with practice management, this stores all your client's centralised database. So internally you're going to know who it is that is working on the particular client, who you need to reference internally. If you're doing your time sheets, you know that the matters are attached on where you're doing your time and who you're coding them to by looking at the matters. And if you're using relationships, which would be beneficial, is that you know who is the uh, beneficiaries in this case and the trustee company. For the relevant client that you want to do the ledger, come down here to the XPA ledgers band. It will have all the ledgers that have been linked to this client. Now that is in an ideal world, if the practice has been using XPA for a long time, they may not have yet linked the ledgers. And the reason why we would suggest that the ledgers are linked is so that we can start using more functions of XPA. From within the band itself, you can use your edit mode if there is no link, you can click on the link to the client and see if there is any particular file that does exist. So in this case, you put in a star to return the file name and you need to make sure that you're looking in your relevant practice that you have rights to. 
search for the description of who you're looking for and then select OK. In our case we already have the link. To open the file you can click on open file. However at this point we, we should realise that we don't need to actually open the file or have to open the file if we're a reviewer. If you're reviewing information you might go straight down here to XPA reports. The XPA reports area has all the internal reports or the transactional reports available to you and you might start with trial balance and view report. There are various options for the trial balance, balance that you'd be able to see in your filters and you'll be printing those filters out here on the top right hand side. So we, before we've even opened the ledger we can see here there's a trial balance. The trial balance itself can be drilled down to see the details underneath this. It's the general ledger for the particular account and what we're seeing. If I go back to view report it comes back to my trial balance. At the end of my trial balance irrespective of what sort of chart I'm using I will see here unposted entries. So straight away I know that everything in the ledger is posted and I'm looking at transactions. And if you're using work papers you would see your work paper links on the right hand side here. The other reports that you could see here as well directly is your financials or your exceed job streams. This will open up and have a look at the source of the template and find your templates that you would like to run. The job streams will vary in name depending on the masters that you're using or your own practice descriptions. Irrespective of what the name is, double click on it, it will open up so you can see a more descriptive term of it and then you'll see that there is a number of sheets that make up what is this job stream. Select run and it will have the various options to run your jobs. When you print you can see here that you can generate these into Excel, PDF or XPS file format. Most of those items should be set up in your master template setups so you don't have to change those. So in here we have a return set of financials depending on the particular templates and jobs and sheets that we're running. So because it's in Excel I can tab through the various different options. If you're running a uh, set of reports and you do happen to come across something that looks like this with a hash value in it, you know that the ledger hasn't been finalised by the person that's been creating it. They haven't completed the financial reporting fields. And the financial reporting fields are things that trigger certain items in the financial statements. So if they've not been run, you will come up with hash value, hash error in your reports. So because we're looking at the uh, ledger from the outside, we haven't opened it yet, we can see that it's still in progress. And you might note from your trial balance that you're missing some journals that need to be added and uh, some assets that need to be added. So we're going to open the ledger so we can have a quick look around how that works inside the ledger itself. So I'm going to open the file and we're now inside the XPA ledger. In your workbook you'll have all the detail of the toolbar items that are appearing in this screen here. The first thing you'll notice is that an XPA ledger will be created in the current year and it will also create the future year known as the year of grace. If you have a periodic 4 period, 12 period or even up to 13 period ledger you'll see 13 periods plus the extra 13 up to 26 periods for the next year. So you would select a default period so whatever you transact to will come back to this default period. That trial balance that we saw before within the XPA ledger band is accessible here from the toolbar under the TB trial balance. In our case what we want to do is go and do some journals to add some information in so we're going to use the toolbar again to go into journals. And in this case we have the choice to change the default period. In my journal entry screen you may notice that I am showing all entries in there. When you open this for the very first time you'll need to change these and show all entries as entered 
and save that as your user default. You'll notice also that I can flick between different options. If it's the first time that you've used XPA, you'll be using the standard options. You do have the ability to save your own options by using a user default, and that's found from the other options button. Going through the various tabs and clicking save user. This will help you speed up your data entry. I'm going to enter in some transactions now. I'm going to purchase $10,000 worth of uh, fixed assets. So I'm going to code this to 970 my asset suspense account. If you don't know what account you're using for your asset suspense account, you can click on the find button, simply go by title and look for the word with uh, the word look for anything with the word asset in it. You'll see that you'll have asset suspense accounts. So I'm purchasing the assets, $10,000 worth of assets that I'm adding. I'm going to save the entry and do my offset account to where I've purchased it from. You'll notice that the unposted value appears as you're entering in your data and also that you can see the unposted entries equals 2. I can choose to post from here or I can exit and use the post entries from the toolbar. Post entries, I have the ability to post not only journals, but all the different types of data entry from the data entry menu option, which is found under here. Once I've now entered that journal to add my assets, I can now go into the assets area to go and add the assets. Found on the toolbar here, or under assets, assets. To add a new asset, simply click on the group that you want to add it to, pick the next code, type in your description and press enter to save the asset. Complete your addition for the year, so make sure that the acquisition date is in the current year and how much you purchased it for. How much is your rate of depreciation and the start date. Apply the relevant rate and dis dis calculation basis based on your region. The tax value, I can then save that. And you can go along to the book value if you're maintaining both tax and book. And in this case, you may also have a different rate for accounting purposes. So you might save that. When you look at the tax movement, you'll see the rate at 30% diminishing value. When I click on book movement, I will have the different rate applied to it. Insurer and supplier are just information that you may store about your fixed asset. I might put the number plate there or serial number department to distinguish the, the asset. Once you've saved that, you can have a look at your depreciation reports. And if you're integrating, you'd probably look at your general ledger integrated depreciation schedule. That will show you all the additions, etc., calculation, depreciation on the assets. When you exit out of assets, it'll ask you to synchronize or you can do that by clicking on the synchronize button manually. If an asset has been sold, you complete this from the movement tab. The little T on the right indicates that that's a tax integrated asset. To sell an asset, simply right click sell and do the journal. I'll say yes to synchronize depreciation and have a look at my trial balance. It does not show the asset subaccount, so if you show that, you'll see the particular asset has been added as a subaccount to the motor vehicle group. And the associated depreciation. For a discretionary trust, you have a profit distribution option. 
For a single period ledger, you have various options to distribute. You can click on the percentages button, which will assign the percentage of the profit distribution based on the ownership details. In this case, it's a discretionary trust, so the percentages have discretionally been entered and I've typed in the dis distributions. If I press clear, it will change the form. I can see the amount of profit and as I type in the distribution amounts, the remaining allocated will be retained. You can see here that you'll be able to check periodic accounts. If I press OK, it will change that profit distribution and post those into your trial balance. The posting accounts for all these ownership accounts are set up in the ownership area in your file details. Beneficiaries will have each beneficiary and the names as they will appear in the report. Posting accounts can be set up and again they will probably come down from your masters and you have optional capital and tax withholding tax distributions as well. If accounts have been entered in there, your distribution columns will have three columns, an extra column here for capital distribution and another column for the tax withholding. Now that we've completed those additional journals, we can come back and run those exceed job streams. But before we run them, we're going to now have a look at the financial reporting fields to make sure that we've completed everything that is specific to this client for the financial reports. And they will vary depending on which masters and which templates you're using for those reports. This template is using an Australian Masters template, so it has certain information underneath the general items, and this can be specific for any template, and we have some setup options. So things like, are the accounts audited, yes or no? Are page numbers required? If you don't want page numbers, you simply just double click on the data value column and change it from a yes to a no. So you would go through the relevant sections that are required for your masters. If you're not familiar with your masters, then there is the general release notes for the masters each year, as well as your own internal practice champions that will be able to guide you into what you need to complete. Once they've been saved, you can close out of here and then you can run your Exceed job stream again. Clicking on the Run, again you have the relevant options that you can choose. I'm assuming that we're running straight from our Masters. Again, this could be a practice requirement to check which job streams and reports you run. Once the reports are done, you should see those changes take effect. Importantly, before you do anything major to change your, your particular ledger or you're uncertain of what the result will look like, then we would suggest you do a save as and back up the ledger. Use this icon here to save as. You'll see here that it will create a copy of the ledger. And in the file name, just simply put um, I always seem to put ZZs in my temporary backups and a description about what it is that you're doing before you do the uh, the copy. So you can see here that we're, we're creating a new ledger. You do have the option to rename existing ledgers or create a ledger. And I'm going to press OK. The ledger is linked. Apply the links to the new file. In this case, it's just a what if scenario. So I'm going to say no. So I'm now just using this ledger. I might go through and check my roll forward process by doing the balance forward and having a look and making sure that I've done all the transactions that I would expected to roll forward and the balance to and closing accounts have been completed. You'll see here that I have a number of years history that I can retain and the number of years transactions. So you may keep up to 10 years of both 
if you're keeping a lot of transactions and uh, history, then the file size will just increase. You have options here if you've got budgets, and we also have options for financial reporting fields to copy just text and memos from one year to the next and overwrite, or copy everything. The options that come up for your balance forward will be varied depending on what is in your ledger. So once I've rolled forward I might run a set of financials again by running the exceed and making sure I was happy with that. If I wasn't happy with it, no harm done because I haven't actually done anything to my live ledger. I've just done a check. Okay. Once I'm happy with that check I can come back to my file and I recently used, come back to the original file and repeat the process so that you know that it's going to work. So we always suggest do a save as if you're doing something that you're unsure of for the first time. If you're going into asset transactions and want to have a look and how they work, take a copy of the ledger and uh, just do your what if scenarios before you go and do it into your live system. Your chart of accounts. If you notice that there is a description that needs to be added or a new, new sub account added, you can do this by simply typing in the account. details down the bottom and save or to create a sub account simply just create the next number on your list down the bottom and change the name to edit an existing account simply double click and put the relevant information in there so adding sub-accounts is as easy as putting a three-digit sub-account underneath it. Whenever you do that, you'll notice that we always have a sub-account created called triple zero, which keeps all the, uh, the control totals and used for reporting purposes to, to store the balances. So this can be done on any profit and loss or balance sheet item. You can also copy accounts from another source. So at the top of the screen here you have template. If you click on the show button that will show the default template assigned to this ledger in the file details area. Or you can go to your template and point to a relevant master or an entity template that you want to copy an account from. You can simply drag and drop. It will add that to the account and it will copy down all the information that was from that, that source. If for whatever reason you're copying something down and it has sub-accounts, it will ask you to add that as well. So very easy to copy information down. If you're copying something from a master chart and you select all accounts, it's going to copy down every single account into your client ledger. This is not a particularly good idea once you finish your initial trial balance take on. The reason for this is, is because your Exceed financial reports will run and try and find a balance for every single account that is attached to your ledger. You can see it takes some time to add it down and so every time you're running your financial statements if you're thinking it's very slow it's because it's added that down. So there is a button and a function here to do called delete inactive and this would be a point in time where you would use your save as to make sure that you are doing the right thing and checking your outcomes before you go and do that. So you have the choice here to select all or select certain accounts to delete. When you delete those it will write a log file. And there's your log file. So be careful about what you've got on your chart and you'll also notice that we have what we call alternative descriptions. So if a particular account has got a tilde in it, it'll have the credit sign, uh, the credit balance first and then it will do your debit title. Also take note of the case sensitive on your accounts and make it consistent. 
So that's our chart of accounts. The last item that we'll look at is documents or ledgers, uh, ledger documents and ledger notes. Ledger documents can be used um, to create links to your existing directories that might be storing your files. In this case we're using the advanced document management system for these documents. I've created a link to a particular file called working papers and when I open this I'm using the exceed data import function. Before I open it because I want to use the exceed data import I'm actually going to open up exceed from the toolbar. Exceed will then open up in Excel with the latest version. Once that's open, I can then click on the link. In that document itself, it's using the named cell reference called APS Ledger ID. If that's been used and I open the Exceed ribbon, I can use the data import function. It will go and update the balances that are in the chart for the particular ledger that I've called. You'll see here that the insert function is putting in the internal name of the ledger. And that is you're using that named cell reference that I've put at A1, which is called underscore APS underscore ledger ID. If I change that ID number to a different ledger ID and use the update, it will change the balances, the accounts, and you see here the year. So how do you know which is your ledger ID? Well, that's coming back to our starting point of using Central Console. When we use the Central Console and the XPA ledgers, you can see here the ledger ID for each of the ledgers that are linked to your client. Very easy. So, where do we go next? What is our notes? Notes can be used for any internal information between accountants. Um, you could do some review notes backwards and forwards and type information between, between yourselves internally in here. If you look at it from the tree view, you can add to an existing note simply by adding to the thread and it will indent down. So you've got some information internally of what's happening with this ledger. And finally, to get more help, click on the help menu and go to your contents. That will give you a comprehensive guide of each of the sections that we've dis discussed, but also in more detail all the other options. My APS Knowledge Base will open up the Reckon APS Knowledge Base area where you can search for items to do on certain how-tos or if any error messages do appear. Of course, additional help is also available in your training courses through the Reckon Training Academy. So in conclusion for this course, our learning outcomes have been, we've understood the key components of XPA. We've opened the XPA files using Central Console to create that ledger link from XPA to Central Console. We've navigated around the key components of the XPA ledger to get you started. We looked briefly at the ownership details, file details, the chart of accounts, the data entry, assets, report selector, posting entries, job streams and also documents and notes. We've used the F1 key to access online help and using the F2 key while in data entry for the shortcut legends. On behalf of the Reckon Training Academy, thank you for your time. If you need further support, please contact us on these numbers. Thank you.